Hello and welcome back to Heroes of Might and Magic 3. We're going to be doing a new playthrough today as the Cove Town. Some of you will already be very familiar with Cove and for others who have not played with the Horn of the Abyss mod before, this is all going to be new to you. In short, it's a pirate themed town. It's extremely well made, just like everything else in Horn of the Abyss. It's probably the most famous mod town that there is. There is going to be a second new town added by the Horn of the Abyss mod soon called Factory. But as of right now, this is the only new town that it adds. Um, and it's of such high quality that you could be mistaken for thinking it's part of the original game, which is why so many people do play with it. Um, and it's pretty much considered a standard faction at this point. And we're going to be doing a huge size random map because again, that is something we can only do on Hall of the Abyss, so we might as well do it. We're going to have six players and unusually we are going to have water content because I think if you're playing as a pirate themed town and if you're trying to do some kind of showcase, you might as well just have some kind of water. I know it does sometimes lead to slightly weird maps, but I think it's worth doing. Uh, we have a good selection of heroes. In fact, I think Cove has arguably the best selection of heroes in the game. They really have a huge number of very good heroes. Um, but the real standout ones here are Corks, the offense specialist, fairly standard conventional uh, offense specialist there. Uh, Elmore is good if you're actually playing on a really water heavy map. I don't think we're going to bother with him on this occasion. There shouldn't be too much water. Uh, there's also Eovacious who has the clone specialty. Uh, this basically allows him to create one extra unit from clone, but only one time per battle, so it's not too overpowered. And then there's also Jeremy, the cannon specialist. The cannon, for those who aren't aware, is a new war machine added as a kind of replacement, not a replacement, but an addition to um, the ballista. You can choose one or the other. Um, and it's, it's a little bit more powerful, and it also allows you to attack castle walls at the same time so it's there's not really any downside to it it's really solid and I also feel like it's the most fun out of all these specialties so I want to do it I want to play as Jeremy just purely for the sake of fun Corks is maybe slightly better but he's also very similar to Crag Hacks so I don't feel like we're going to really see uh, the most unique parts of Cove's gameplay if we pick Corks and yeah I think that's all fine so let's just begin and let's see what we get so I've never actually done a playthrough as Cove before, either on the channel or off the channel, so I'm kind of learning this myself. Um, but I have played against them many times, so I'm pretty familiar with their creature lineup and things like that. Okay, so our starting location, I can already see three different piles of gold, two of which we can access straight away. We've also got a Nymph Waterfall for some free units. And we've started off with a thousand gold, which I think is the maximum. So that's gone pretty well. But I don't think we're ready to take on lots of leprechauns just yet. And I can see some gold to the east, so I think we're going to move in that direction first. Let's see who's in our tavern. So in our tavern we have Annabelle, the pirate specialist, who is going to come with 13 pirates. So pirates are... They're a ranged unit, but they only have 4 shots. So they're okay in melee because they don't have the melee penalty, but... Still, like all ranged units, you don't really want to have them go in melee, so we're going to try and avoid that if we can. Let's just go straight for the gold. I think we need it, and I think we'll just return to the path. We don't, of course, have a spell book just yet. We're going to go and pick up some nymphs, and hopefully this will give us enough to pick up another hero, which it does. Could go straight for this just to see what we're up against. I think we'll pick this up first. Okay, so that gives us 3800, which will be enough to pick up Annabelle. Uh, I think we're going to leave the pirates behind. And I'm going to go west. I'm going to pick up as much gold as I can. And there's not too much else we can do. Let's just go for the ore pit, although we can't reach it this turn. So in that case, might as well go pick this up. And we still have 2800 left, which is perfect. We can go for another hero. Ain, of course, gives us an extra 350 gold per turn. So since there's a choice between Ain and the Town Hall, obviously there's only 150 gold in that, so we might as well go for Ain just for the sake of being able to explore a little bit more. Uh, starting off on Swamp means we don't want to be going around with Gremlins. So we'll take a Nymph. And I think we're going to send Ain to the east. Hopefully find a little bit more gold, as that appears to be a dead end. I think we're just going to have to come back. Okay. I still think that's worth it. 
We at least have the extra mobility, and of course having an extra hero is going to be more useful than anything else. I could have maybe sent her to the north instead, but... Yeah, I think that's all fine. We can use her to transfer some units over to Jeremy next turn. First let's see what we've actually got. So we can see the shipyard right there, we can see a Beholder's Sanctuary, which is a creature bank. Um, unfortunately, yeah, this is kind of the problem with water maps, is there's really not a big incentive to send Jeremy onto the water just for that one bank. And if we send a scout, there's literally just one piece of Flotsam. There might be a little bit more to the north. Um, but yeah, it doesn't really appeal too much, so I think we'll be pretty much ignoring that for now. Uh, going back to our town... I think before we move Ain out of the town, let's try and get ourselves a bit more gold. So uh, this is a dead end. Can't go through this way. Don't think we have any better options, so let's do it. Okay, and then Jeremy can go to the north, pick this up, I think instead. This doesn't really reveal too much. We can see the Spirit of Oppression there, but uh, I'd probably rather keep that because that's a very good artifact. I think I'm just going to go east. Pick this up and let's go towards this. And then I don't really want to take the fight with the archers. I'll probably just start heading back and I think what we'll do is we'll try and get ourselves the Mage Guild. If I try to take this fight, it's lots of diamond gone, so we're definitely not ready for that yet if we try to take on lots of stone gargoyles. I feel like that is doable. But we don't gain too much from going west here. But still, I can't really see too many better options. So I think that's what we'll go for. Okay, so let's start by building the town hall, because I think we definitely want that. And let's just move all of these across. And I think I am willing to at least spend a little bit more gold on a few more nymphs, and let's go ahead and get a few crewmates too. That is all our gold gone. Okay, so yeah, 19 pirates should be easily enough to take this fight. Let's just put them on top. And let's put these guys just spread across. We do have another nymph waterfall after this, so I think that is going to be worth going for. They don't have any obsidian gargoyles, which is great. Let's just move these guys up somewhere they can be safe. So you can see that for now it's not really doing too much damage, but as we kind of progress, the cannon will become extremely powerful. Let's see, actually, 7 speed versus 6 speed, so we should be safe to go out and attack. I don't really want to take a risk of not getting the kills, so I am going to come back straight afterwards. Let's shoot these, bring these back to safety, and I should be able to block these off. Shouldn't have done that. Yeah, big mistake. Oh well. So we take a few losses there, we shoot these, and then we finish them off. Ten nymphs, not too bad in the grand scheme of things, let's just keep going west. And then Ain is now free to go and pick this up. And I think we'll just move straight back. Fastest unit is the Nymph, so let's just leave Jeremy with one of those. And let's move towards the waterfall. And for now that's all we can do, so let's just end the turn. And I think next thing for Jeremy to do is I could go north to the Knolls, I don't think there's a big need to do that. I think what I'll do instead is I'll send Ain to take those on. Only two losses expected. I think that's fine. Then we'll come back, we'll give the units back to Jeremy. I'm not sure I want to spend a thousand gold on School of Magic, but I think I probably will.
Okay, fairly straightforward. So basic navigation, I think normal amount a normal amount of water isn't really worth going for navigation with, and we've already seen that water in general is really hit and miss, so we are going to go for advanced artillery, which in this case is going to give us double damage on our cannon, so we've already made it twice as strong as it was in the previous fight. Uh, let's just go ahead and get knowledge for now, we already have two spell power, and let's just move in this direction. Uh, we can probably clear out just about everything, return to the town, and get ourselves a spell book. I'm sure we can take fewer losses than that. There we go, already able to kill a stack of 17 of those in one shot. Easy. Okay, so lots of halberdiers might be slightly harder, but actually for a for a day 3 force this is not bad, and you can see that even though Cassie does come with a larger number of nymphs, uh, Jeremy is able to get going pretty quickly, so that's all good. Let's go pick this up. Slow spell, so that is good. We'll try and get that back to Jeremy if we can. We might not need it though. And go pick up some wood. Turn to our town, and one thing I do know about this town is you... Uh, you need the blacksmith in order to get the frigate, and I think, yeah, you need the mage guild in order to get the Tower of the Seas, so you might as well start moving towards the city hall fairly early. Uh, we don't need the blacksmith because we already have a cannon, so let's go for the marketplace first, keep our options open. Uh, we've actually got Lord Hart, and with this being Horn of the Abyss, Estates has actually been buffed, so it's twice as good as it is in Shadow of Death. So I would like to get him, definitely. I think we should try and work towards that. Okay, so we're now able to return to the town. I think we can take this fight first. Let's do it. I'm pretty sure it's safe. Yeah, only one loss expected. I feel like we can prevent that, but honestly, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to go for basic armor here. Um, one thing I would like to do is I'm pretty sure I didn't check this, but I'm pretty sure cannons do benefit from archery. So I'm going to want archery, I'm going to of course be very happy to keep artillery. And so one or two of the skills you might normally go with on a main, uh, I might have to forego. So I'm not sure which ones I'm going to drop, I think... I might not need tactics. Yeah, I'm not really sure, I'll have to decide that later on. Uh, but we have opened that up, we should now be able to pick up Lord Hart. And I want to get myself... Some type of unit that's not going to give me the movement penalty. So I'm going to go straight to Jeremy, and I'm going to dismiss this. I'm going to head south and pick all this up. We'll return Jeremy to the base, and we can afford the Mage Guild level 1. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we do get slow straight away in the Mage Guild. I could take the fight with the Lizardmen, I'm not sure what kind of spell scroll they'll be guarding, presumably something quite good. I think Nymphs on Swamp Terrain can cross in two rounds. So this might actually be worth doing. I am going to go for it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so they do want to fight. There are in fact 40 of them, which is slightly more than I would have liked. Can go for a haste. Don't think it's going to be enough. But yeah, we can cross in two rounds, so that's not too bad. I think my best option is probably just to go for Magic Arrow. Okay, so they have really good morale, so we take a few losses there, that kind of sucks, but never mind. Okay. I'm hoping this is going to be a really good spell, because we've been kind of screwed over by the morale here. 
don't think we need to waste any spell points. Yeah, that wasn't great, but never mind. Let's just move towards this and let's keep exploring. Take some gold. Head south, as uh, there doesn't appear to be too much there. We can fight lots of lizard men in order to go to the west. I don't think I want to do that. Yeah, because that was quite a high number of lizardmen, I'm hoping this is going to be a pretty good spell scroll. We'll have to see. Take 2,000 gold from here, and let's just go and pick this up. Start heading back. And we have 4,200 gold, so we do have the option of picking up Nagash, who is another plus 350 gold hero. This playthrough could go on for some time, so I am going to go for it. I think it does make sense. And I think we're going to send him to the north. I mean, I don't really have too many places to send these. Let's just take some of the slow units back. We'll dismiss the skeleton, and let's see what this is. Trost ring. Okay, I was hoping for something a bit better than that, but never mind. Uh, we could also go south, take on some orcs. It should be pretty similar to the last fight, but... I'm hoping it would be slightly easier. But I don't think we really know. So I'm actually going to move towards this. Uh, it's Dispel. And I think it's worth taking the fight with the Walking Dead and then pushing to the east. And so that's all fairly weakly guarded, shouldn't be too bad. And 1700 is not enough to get another hero, so that's all fine. Let's visit this, and we can get basic air magic. I thought about just letting that go. But I still want to do it. Always a good skill to have. I'm actually pretty tempted to take on the diamond golems, but I don't think we're ready for that just yet. If we can get ourselves the frigate, we'll be getting closer. And I think we can take that fairly early. But yeah, for now I'm going to go with the blacksmith, and we are just going to keep moving towards the city hall. Uh, we've got Ivor the ranger, and Jabarkas who comes with a few extra units if we want him. I am pretty tempted, because we have such good income. I don't really see why not. This should be an easy fight. I'm pretty sure we can just completely kite them. Shouldn't have done that. I do need to be a bit careful with my 4 ammo. Yeah, so I'm going to actually defend here. I think four should be more than enough. And yeah, I think we can bring them a little bit closer. There we go. Okay, so let's keep going in this direction. We can go to the War Machine Factory. But we have to take on a horde of lizard men, so that's really not ideal. If we can push into this, um, this kind of zone, we might find an Inferno Town, and we might be able to get a Blacksmith, which in turn would give us an Ammo Cart, which would be a big help for our Pirates. So let's do it. I think we have a good chance. Try and pull these away. I'm not sure why they didn't come forward, but there we go. Okay, so that spell scroll might be something slightly better than that level 1. And yeah, lots of sprites should be pretty easy. No losses expected, perfect, so let's just keep pushing on. Okay, so we can see Lich's guarding, I think that's the ever-flowing cloak of 
something. One of the uh, one of the resources, can't remember which. Go visit this basic estates for Annabelle as well. So we are making a lot of passive income, which is great. Uh, another slow spell there. And yeah, I don't think we really have any great incentive to send our main in this direction. Uh, Ain is free just to push, but I think we'll start off just by picking up this stuff. We're going to send Lord Heart to the Warehouse of Crystal just because it's uh, some easy free resources and we can also go and visit the uh, the campfire and the windmill. And then Nagash is going to pick this up. Okay, so that turns out to be landmine which is not too useful. Let's take all of the slower units and let's just move a little bit further. Start probing. Okay, so 4k in the bank is enough to hire Jabarkus, and I think with the income we have, we might as well do it. We can stay on the path pretty much the whole time, so there's no real downside. Okay. So no sign of anyone yet, which is good, but pretty much what you should expect on a huge size map. I'm going to start moving with Jabarkus first. Okay, so I think this first fight I am going to take with Nagash. Just so we can explore with him first. I might as well take the fight because I'm pretty sure we can do it with no losses. I was wondering where my cannon was for a minute. It does tend to help out quite a lot. If we do have some spells we can cast, we can go straight for a magic arrow and I don't see why not. Okay, so that's all open, and I think what I'll do now is I'll send Jabarkus through first, just to scout. So I think there might actually not be a town, uh, but we can see a way through a monolith. Push a little bit further. So a pack of steel golems, I'm pretty sure we can take that. Okay, so it appears to be a pretty empty zone. There is a Colosseum of the Magi, but it's guarded by lots of Magogs, which is not a fight we want to take. Um, there are some Sea Dogs guarding the way through to the next zone, which is not an easy fight either. So if anything, I think we probably just want to move to the south, take on the Golems. But we should also do some exploring with Nagash, so I think what I'll do is I'll send Jeremy across. We'll take the units. And we will send the gas just straight off to the east. Okay, so another Colosseum of the Magi. This time it's only guarded by a pack of horned demons, which should be pretty doable. It's actually quicker to go straight across. I think this is worth doing. Let's do it. Okay, so 12 in total shouldn't be too bad. If they got morale, we would have been a little bit screwed, but we do get lucky. Or at least we don't get unlucky. And these guys are 7 speed to our 6, we might as well just try and waste their time as much as we can. There we go. I don't think we're going to need pathfinding because we're playing as Cove, so we should have um, pretty easy time with terrains in general as long as we stick with a mostly cove army. I think 
In this kind of early game I prefer to go for knowledge so I'm going to go for that and we can see a prison there which is guarded by a horde of pikemen. This should again be a pretty easy fight. I'm actually pretty happy with um, how quickly we've got going here. We've already kind of broken through at least one zone. And I'm not really seeing anything that's going to really stop our push. You're actually strong enough to take out 11 pikemen with just the cannon. There we go. Okay, so I can open this up and I can use it just to scout a little bit further, but we're pretty much out of moving points. I don't think Nagash can quite make it. So let's actually take some of the slower units back once again. And let's just move as far forward as we can. So there's another chest there, that's great. We'll go for this and we should be able to open up the prison next turn, hopefully get a decent hero from that. Let's actually check this once again. So this has Luna, who of course is a very good hero but not really the kind of um, approach I'm planning to take here. And we can go for the City Hall, which is very tempting, but we are approaching Day 7 pretty quickly, and I think I prefer to go Tower of the Seas. Might as well take advantage of the fact that we did get the Warehouse of Crystal. And I think next turn, this makes sense to go for the Citadel. I think for now that should be fine. Ain we're going to send through to pick up the gold that we left behind. And then Lord Heart is going to pick this stuff up. And with it being day 6, I'm actually pretty tempted just to leave him here to pick up some of the things we left behind. So Lawrence of Legion is going to increase the growth of our pirates if we can get ourselves the frigate. In order to get the frigate we just need 10 wood and 1000 gold so it's definitely doable next turn. I think I do actually prefer that because pirates do upgrade into sea dogs and sea dogs are extremely good units. Okay, still no sign of any opponents. Let's send the Gash across first just to open this guy up. So we get Rashka who comes with a few Inferno units. And uh, I feel like we can probably take on lots of Stone Golems, no problem. I think I'd prefer to do that with the Gash though, and I am going to take the cannon. Yeah, let's do it. So we're expected to take quite a few losses here. We do have Slow, uh, we have Bless, and some other things too. This was probably a mistake I guess because of course our cannon's not going to be doing too much damage with Nagash. And we've only got the four shots which is not great. Gonna have to try and hang on to them I think. Okay, so we've successfully lured most of them away. We can go for full power shot on these, which is only enough to kill two of them. So yeah, we're going to have some trouble here. We can go for some big hits with our nymphs just to finish off the stacks. I think we might have to do that. Yeah, so we've already used up most of our shots. I can send these guys forward, but I don't think I need to. And for these guys, it's a pretty free kill just to go and finish this off. So I'm hoping these guys should be just about strong enough to finish off three of these at once. Let's see, so yeah, two to three kills. I'm willing to take that chance. Don't quite manage it, but that's okay. And we're just going to pull back.
Okay, so we are out of shots. Okay, so if we go for Bless on the Nymphs, that is going to allow us to do just two kills. So yeah, that's not really good enough. Okay. So we take a few losses there, I think that's honestly okay. Let's just go and finish these off. And then these guys can get three kills now. Let's do it. Yeah. Grand scheme of things, that's not too bad. I, I probably should have just gone for it with our other hero instead, but never mind. We've now got that artifact, and we're able to pass that back. And let's just try and push with Jeremy and see what we can find. Also got Rashka's units if we need them. Okay, so we're able to break into another zone. Definitely don't need the skeleton. Two losses expected. I think our numbers are starting to slowly dwindle, so I'm going to try and hang on to a few more than that as they do get morale, so got to be a little bit careful. There we go. And we'll push on to these. Should be a very easy fight. I'm sure we can do this with very few, if any, losses. There we go. Okay, let's see what we can find. So it's day seven, so if we go visit the temple, we are going to get plus two morale. Which does tempt me, because we could have a potentially tough fight coming up. We don't really know what we're going to find here. With it being day seven, I feel really tempted by this, so I am just going to go for it. And uh, we've actually found a opposing player. Orange player. So now's a good time as any to go and actually see what we're up against. So Orange is indeed a Conflux player, and Pacis is actually their starting hero. We've actually got three Cove players on the map. We are one of three. Um, so... We're going to be seeing plenty of Cove, basically, but uh, for now we're just up against Conflux, and I feel like we've made a pretty good start here. What I would like to try and do, I think, is to try and chain some units uh, across for the start of next week. So let's try and set that up. So we're going to send Lord Hart back to base to be the start of the chain, although I guess... We can just buy another hero to be the start of the chain, but I do want to keep Lord Hart in the town just for the sake of... Um, for the sake of taking advantage of the Loins of Legion. So I'm pretty confident this works completely fine as a chain. We should, potentially we could have some trouble getting uh, Lord Hart across to Annabelle, but I think if he's starting off with just the one nymph, he should have just enough speed to pull that off. Uh, and then we're not able to chase down paces particularly well. I suspect that they've already been to the windmill. So I might be better off just going straight for the town. Does potentially leave Rashka to open to an attack. Um, but if we split these, we might be able to keep them alive, just in case he does get attacked by Paces. I think Paces, there's a good chance Paces is just going to run off. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. And because Jabarkus does have some extra units, I think we should move him up in this direction as well. I think that should be fine. Okay, so Pacis, yeah, looks like he's actually running back to his town to go and defend it, but uh, as the human player, we should be able to take him on before he can reinforce. Uh, we can upgrade the frigate. The thing is, we do already have some pirates, and we're not going to be able to upgrade them on the fly, so... I'm not sure I want to go for that. I think possibly some upgraded nymphs might be better. Let's start by just recruiting everything we can, which is going to cost pretty much all of our money, but that's fine. So we've now got Darjim as well, who is going to provide another six pirates, and Fafner, who is not too great. We need to try and get ourselves a bit more gold if we can. 
I'm not sure I can necessarily do that. I think these units should be more than enough, so I'm just going to carry these. And we are just going to chain across. Okay, so let's bring the nymphs back together. Let's use one stacks of goblins. Uh, let's definitely take the sea witches and let's take the orcs too. And that's a pretty strong force. I'm pretty sure we can go for the push here. Um, I'm a little bit nervous to take on the town depending on how well defended it is as it uh, looks like there's no moat. So that's going to be pretty weak. And I'm pretty confident we can do this. Yeah, I'm pretty confident this is going to be enough. We can't see their numbers, but... They're only going to have at most one week's worth of units, as yeah, we are expected to win. They have no arrow towers, and we are able to go straight for a shot. Not actually in range of the air elementals. So I think I'm going to wait. Then again, everything else is going to be trapped behind them, so it doesn't really matter too much. Let's just go for the kill on these. Yeah, so I think pretty much all the losses we're going to take are going to be from the um, from the magic arrow, which is no biggie. So see, which is of course do cast a spell after shooting. I think it's either disrupting ray or weakness, uh, which is always handy. And that is pace is gone. We get his charm of mana. We get basic wisdom. Let's go for that definitely. And uh, they're still in the game, they have another hero to the north. And we should actually be free now to steal their units if we want to. Let's see what we can get out of the tavern. So we do have Darjim, we can buy him here instead. I think I do want to go straight for the kill. So let's go after this hero, who is also pretty weak. Okay, so we're expected to lose a Sea Witch here, which yeah, okay. I think he might be a fireball specialist, so that loss is unfortunately unavoidable. That's not the, like I could have seen that coming, knowing that he's the I think he's the fireball specialist. I'm not even sure, but I, I assume that's how he knows the spell. That is the kind of thing you can see coming if you really know the game extremely well. But I'm not going to beat myself up too much for forgetting about that. Okay, so we've now opened all of this up, so we should be pretty safe just to shift pretty much all our units, all our heroes up in this direction. Uh, as they have opened the way through to another swamp, which I think is just more of our zone, but there's no reason not to go explore it. Okay, so a throng of hellhounds is not realistic. So we're not going to be able to go for that just yet. I could try and keep my hero chain as an option, but I don't think we really need to. Uh, I am going to go for, I think, just anything that's going to help us with either our economy or with growing extra units. So I'm going to go for the pub. For a few extra crewmates, I don't think we're going to miss a thousand gold too badly. And I think other than that, we'll just hang on to our gold. So we're down to just the four opponents now, the others are going to have a lot more time to prepare for us. We did get really lucky finding them on day one before they could recruit any units. We would have had to deal with probably about twice as many units if we were unlucky there. 
Uh, so the Medusa stores, I'm trying to remember how quick Medusas are. I'm sure they're faster than these. I think they're 6 speed. So I think I'm probably just going to let the goblins go unless we're desperate to go and pick them up with Rashka, which... Rashka doesn't have too much to be doing, so I don't see why not. Let's just go ahead and hang on to them. These guys are 7 speed and I don't really care if they die, so I'm going to bring them. And yeah, I think we can go for this. Three range units might not be ideal for this. But our pirates are really strong. And we don't have our cannon as the other thing, so I'm not sure we should do it. Let's see what they have. Lots of Medusas. I think I'm getting in over my head here, but I am going to go for this. Uh, the losses aren't actually expected to be too bad. Let's see if we can do even better. So we can go for haste, which is going to make these guys faster than these, although they're all the same speed anyway. Um, it's just this one stack at the top right that gets to go before our crewmates. So we could just go block them instead, and I think that works completely fine. Oh crap, bad morale. Okay, so we got bad morale, that's kind of a problem. Yeah, really bad morale, but we do get enough turns at least to finish them off, and that honestly wasn't as bad as I expected, so I think that was worth it just for the 2,000 gold. And uh, I think next thing to do really is just to go and push. I'm not a big fan of these kind of uh, turning maps into creature bank fests. So I might just ignore the, the Wolf Raider picket and just carry on with the Cove units. Um, I'm going to send Nagash into the swamp. Yeah, so they only just broke into this, so unsurprisingly there's not really any way through, and there's not really too much to see. I'm not sure I'm particularly motivated to push in that direction. I've got quite a lot of heroes and uh, not the most obvious directions to send them in. I'm going to go for the City Hall here because it's day two, so we don't need to worry too much about upgrading our um, creature production just yet. And then we've got 2,000 gold, we've already got the City Hall in our Conflux Town. And I'm not in a rush to buy the rest, so I think I'll probably just hang on to that instead. Okay, so more of the same Conflux Zone to the east. Uh, the Vial of Lifeblood for plus 2 HP for our units is not too bad for nymphs, and I'm sure we can take on lots of Gorgons. But I think I would like to push in this direction. A pack of Sea Dogs wouldn't be too bad. If we use Haste, we should be able to rush them. I would like to go back and upgrade my units. But I think it does make sense to keep pushing. Of course, we can also take on the Steel Golems, which is even easier. I'm going to start moving some of these heroes back towards our original town. Uh, and I'm going to pick up some more units using Lord Heart. And we could have picked up Dargem, but never mind. Okay, so Jeremy, I'm pretty keen on just sending straight down towards the Steel Golems. I'm going to send Rashka north just to scout this out. So it looks like he broke into our zone to the west as well. 
Okay, so I can go explore that with Nagash instead, or someone like him. Just do the usual weekly route. So that's another 10 crystal, which is nice. It's sulfur that we need in order to get the sea serpents. So if you've not seen the cove lineup before, uh, this is what it looks like unupgraded. Like I say, I don't really think there are any weak units here. There are crewmates which are maybe a little bit below average. They're kind of slow and they're kind of weak, but honestly, they're not bad. I really think pretty much all these units are good. And we do have a strong enough economy to just keep moving along. So let's go for the nest. That gets us Stormbirds, which are not too great, but they upgrade into Aces, which can attack twice. And um, they're kind of like Flying Crusaders, except a lot more frail, um, but definitely a very good creature. Jeremy doesn't really have too much to be doing other than moving further to the south. Um, I, I know I could take on the Wolf Raider Picket, but it's just not really my preferred way of playing if I'm just playing single player. I'm going to take on the Satyrs because I think we do have these units, we might as well use them. We might as well check out this too, Fireball. So maybe Intius is not the Fireball Specialist and he just got it from there. I'm trying to think, because I, I know that Intius starts off with... Intius starts off with Fire Magic, but I think he's actually the Bloodlust Specialist. So yeah, I couldn't have actually seen it coming earlier. Uh, a pack of Satyrs, yeah, let's just do this. Just for the sake of opening it up. And we can see that... Oh, crap. Yeah, this is not opened up too well. Crap. Yeah, I need to sort out this morale. Yeah, that wasn't good. I'm still really tempted to go for this Throng of Hellhounds. Throng is just so... it's so unpredictable, because if it's a hundred, that's, that's honestly completely fine. 250 is too much. Especially having just accidentally thrown away a Sea Witch, which was not the finest moment of the playthrough so far, but never mind. I do sometimes get these... I don't know what to call them, backseat gamers on part ones. Um, they usually go away by part two, but yeah, I'm not like I'm not like trying to play absolutely perfectly here, so if I throw away the occasional sea witch, um, I'm not proud of it, but it's not the end of the world, honestly. Okay, so Jabarkus does not have any swamp friendly creatures. Rashka has at least one nymph, so I think we will just go explore with Rashka, unless Rashka's already used his moving points, which he has. So in that case. Let's have Jabarkus take this instead. And let's go west. So it's completely a dead end to the south, and if we go to the northwest, it looks like it's also pretty much a dead end. Um, but we'll go and explore as much as we can. As uh, Annabelle doesn't have too much to be doing, I think we'll just send her up to take these slower units off Jeremy. Although she's not quite got enough. So let's do that with Nagash instead. I'm not sure how much I care about upgrading this, but we are fairly fairly early into the map, so I think it maybe does make sense just to keep this going. Yeah, we've got such a strong economy that I think we should just go for the Altar of Earth. And then I am going to pick up Darjim. And I'm probably not going to give Jeremy the, the Conflux units, I think I might just use that for a secondary hero instead. Okay, no sign of any more opponents yet. Let's uh, let's go explore to the east. So I'm going to start by giving the units back to Jeremy. I feel like we might have enough. What I could do... 
is I could just sacrifice a hero just to check that out. I've certainly got enough of them. Probably not Nagash because he's actually helpful, but I think Annabelle isn't really that needed. So she might be a good pick. I don't want the Hellhounds because they're lowering our morale. I think I would just like to throw Annabelle in. Because we don't know what this is, but it could be really good. Let's do it. Okay, so that's 17 times 6. Which, I have no idea how much that is, but I feel like I can probably do it. This might be a massive mistake, so I don't know. I don't mind losing Annabelle, I think she might have had an artifact, but never mind. Just gonna let it go. I think I'm gonna do it. Yeah, so we are expected to win. It is right at the very lower end of Throng, so that's not too bad. Having taken a moment to think this over, I, I think it was... Definitely a mistake to bring the orcs. The dilemma I kind of have is... We've not got enough stacks to actually protect the nymphs. And so these guys are going to come forward, two big stacks, 50 hellhounds in total, and they're definitely going to focus on the big stack of nymphs. So what I can do is I can haste the crewmates, and I can then block at least one of them, but not both of them. So what I could do is, I could stop the bottom stack from reaching us. The problem is, if the top stack then comes in, if I weaken it using the pirates, it comes in and attacks, and then the nymphs are able to finish it off with the counter attack. Then the second stack still comes in, and then we have to take two hits instead of one. So there's not really a good way to do this from what I can see. If I tried slowing them... I'm not sure we can slow them enough, I'm not sure exactly how much this would slow them by. Reduces their speed by 25%, yeah, because slow did get nerfed by Horn of the Abyss, so it's going to drop them by maybe 2 speed. So there'd be 1, 2, I need to actually get the... I'm actually going to get the grid up, because this is pretty serious. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... It should actually work. I'm going to do it. We're going to block these, and we're just going to try and focus down the top stack as much as we can. And these guys are pretty screwed. But we can just about keep them safe for one more turn, so no reason not to do that. And yeah, we're just going to focus on this top stack as much as we can. They do go forward, they actually attack the orcs instead of the nymphs, so that's pretty much perfect. Uh, this stack at the back hasn't gone yet, but they are slowed, and they can't really do too much to us. So let's focus on one of the bigger stacks down at the bottom. And we've got no spell points left. I could draw out the retail, but then I've lost some of my protection for my pirates. Kind of depends how much I care about keeping the nymphs alive, which I'm not sure how much I do. I can just wait and I should actually be able to take the retail using the, um, the crewmates instead. And I can also go for the block by doing that. So this would probably get the kill, in fact almost certainly get the kill. Better off just weakening these. And then what should happen is these guys won't be able to reach us, they'll have to go through the orcs. These guys I think will go first. No, these guys actually go before Hmm. The 20 stack goes before the 11 stack, so the 20 stack could come up, finish off, finish off the orcs, and then the 11 stack will come up 
and probably just attack the crewmates. I think I'm better off just defending. That's okay, so they're actually going to go for the cannon, which is 250 hit points, so they're not able to do too much to that. And it's just this 26 stack left to go. And it can reach all of our stacks, so I think we should just go and weaken it. And then these guys should wait. As they do go for the crewmates, and these guys are now not strong enough to finish off this stack, so we might as well go for them. And this should just go for the biggest stack we can. So if I send these out, they are then open to attack by the 14 and the 11 stack, so I think we do again just want to defend. And the cannon's pretty tanky, I think it should just about survive. Uh, it's just the 11 stack left to go, so let's take them out and let's weaken these. And then these guys once again are just going to wait. I'm going to wait with these as well, although actually they won't make any difference. Let's finish these off, I think we can do that now. So none of the remaining stacks are slowed. Which means they will be free to attack. Which means I probably shouldn't have gone for that. This is the first stack to go. So I think we just have to try and weaken them as much as we can, but we can't actually stop this next stack from coming through. I'm not sure what to do about that. Yeah, there's no way to stay safe, so I think my best option... Admitting it was a mistake to kill the two stack, my best option here is just going to be to defend, I think. If I go for the attack, I'm going to get 4-7 to seven kills, that's actually not bad. I might just do that instead. Yeah, let's just do it. So, we're then open to be attacked by these, although... If we were to go and block, we might be able to keep the nymphs safe, but if we do that, we have then opened up the pirates to attack. Pirates are much more important than the nymphs. No, I'm just going to defend. So we're going to take a nasty hit there, we do lose quite a few, and these guys are out of shots. But I think we can pretty much just finish them off now. There we go. Okay, so actually, if anything, the heaviest losses were to the crewmates. Uh, we got rid of the orcs, which of course we didn't need. They did kind of work as a meat shield in the end, so it wasn't too bad. And then 24 nymphs honestly isn't too bad for 101 uh, hellhounds. And hopefully we'll get something pretty good out of this. Let's go for it actually with Jeremy. 5,000 experience, I think that's okay. And basic tactics is very tempting. I'm not sure how many skill slots I've got left, so... I need to be a bit careful because I definitely want earth magic and I definitely want logistics. But I also want archery, so maybe archery would have been better than tactics in hindsight. But on the other hand, tactics would help a lot with keeping some of our units safe. It would have helped a lot in that last fight, for example. So I think that's okay. That gets us disrupting ray, which is also pretty good to have. And I think I will scout to the east first before I decide not to send Jeremy in that direction, as, uh, yeah, I don't think it's worth it. Seems to be. Pretty basic stuff, and a bit of a dead end too, so yeah. I think it does make sense just to send Jeremy to the west instead. And we are going to start pushing towards our next opponent. Ain is going to stay in base, and Jabarkus is going to go and check this out. We'll see what we can see. I'm not sure we can actually get through here, which, no, we can't. Uh, we can see just more of the coast. And otherwise, nothing too exciting, so I think we'll just start returning to our Conflux Town. I should decide which of these heroes I'd like to use as... as my kind of backup hero. I'm actually pretty tempted by Lord Hart, because the more you level him up, the more he contributes to the economy. That's actually really tempting, I think I'm gonna do that. So, I'm gonna take Ain. Now we'll leave him with the units, but we'll pass the Loins of Legion over to Ain. Uh, we'll allow Lord Hart to go through, we'll start moving him towards the Conflux Town. And then Ain herself is going to go and claim this. To be honest, I totally didn't realise we hadn't claimed that already, but there we go, we've got it now. And we should go for this as well. And then Darjem doesn't have too much to be doing, I think. In the absence of anything else, let's just go pick up some Mercury. 
and we can pick up another hero now that we've lost um, Annabelle. But Fafna, I don't think it's worth getting Fafna, I'm not too bothered about that, so let's instead focus on what buildings we can get. So we can't get the Nyx Fort just yet, that does require some ore. Um, I do want to get the Roost, just to get as many Acids as possible. And then in this town, I think we do want to upgrade the Altar of Air, we do have plenty of those resources, so that's all fine. Uh, and if anything, this is probably a better town to build up the Mage Guild in. What I need to check on is yeah, you do need a Mage Guild level 2 in order to upgrade the Tower of the Seas. So I should at least save some resources for that, although it looks like we can afford it completely fine. Okay, that's all good, I'm just going to win the turn there. And for now there is still no sign of our opponents, they are going to be a little bit stronger than that first foe. And I think Jeremy... could have probably left him with some slightly faster units, but... Yeah, I think definitely the best thing for Jeremy to do is going to be to go straight for the Steel Golems. There's a good chance we'll find another opponent through there. Uh, and then we're going to send Lord Hart across. Pass over some units. And actually, let's take the Vampire's Cowl as well. Because then we do have the option of using the Gash. And I have always thought that this kind of... Necromancer hero on a non-necropolis town. Of all the towns, Conflux has to be the best. Because, of course, most of these elementals, in fact all of the elementals, are not affected by morale. So it's bad news for sprites and it's bad news for phoenixes. But outside of that, there's not really a downside to having a big stack of skeletons, so... I am actually pretty tempted by that. I'm going to get a Citadel here because I think, yeah, we are going to start building up a second hero. We do have a really strong economy, so I think we can afford to get two heroes going at once. And then Ain doesn't really have too much to be doing. We're going to go to the Water Wheel. And I think, if anything, I'll probably send Lord Hart to the north because I want to open this stuff up. A Throng of Gremlins could be pretty bad, though, because it could be um, Master Gremlins. So maybe not. Okay, well I think for now we've done enough for the first part, we still have quite a few opponents left to kill, we've only really made a small dent in terms of our actual creature lineup, we've still got a lot of very interesting creatures to come. But as always do check the playlist link in the description and if I have uploaded the further parts you will be able to find them all in one place there. And if I haven't then do of course consider subscribing and you'll be able to catch them as soon as they come out. But that is all for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.